Okay, YouTube viewers and subscribers, I've got some progress here. I figured I'd shoot a quick video and show some of the update or some of the progress I've made. Um, this is just not something that I can actually sit and shoot a video of while I'm doing it because I'm all over the place. I got crap all over my table. I'm in and out of the garage and in my room cutting and stuff because I'm doing a lot of the cutting out in the garage and then I'll come in here and do some fitment. So with that said, what I've got here is I've got my engine mounted and the cowling cut and installed. Now maybe I'm going in a little bit reverse order here because I'm actually going to take the cowling off and then show you the engine uh, installation. But this is where I've got to now and this is where I figured I'd go ahead and start it. So what I did was I showed in one of my posts I used a piece of cardboard paper or thick paper and I cut and I measured or marked off preliminary holes on each side of the cowling now this cowling has got the holes are offset some because the it's a boxer engine so the cylinders aren't exactly in line so anyway I marked those then I installed my engine went through my fuselage with some wood glue glued up or used my finger just dabbed it in there and just kinda of went along all the seams and I also did some triangle reinforcement around the firewall but what I just completed doing was cutting out the holes for the cowling and as you can see I didn't do all that great of a job but it is what it is and by the way I don't think I've ever mentioned this on video anyway about how much I really freaking hate cowled engine installations and I usually avoid them like the plague for this very reason for cooling reasons for tuning reasons for a lot of reasons but anyway so I've got the holes cut and it took a lot of shaping and stuff like that to try to get them about the same as you can see really didn't do that good of a job on this side uh, the hole is not quite where it needs to be and it's a little bit larger but man it's tough it's tough working with this fiberglass because what I did was I drilled pilot holes in the cowling and then I used I don't have them in here I used a little pair of Lexan scissors that I've used in the past to cut bodies for RC cars and stuff like that I figured I'd use those instead of just doing a Dremel the whole way and really removing a lot of material so I used the Lexan scissors to cut the majority of the holes out and to rough it out and then I used a Dremel with a small sanding disc to go in there and kind of shape it to what I thought was right and then I had to try to figure out well how the hell am I going to get this damn thing on this plane so I tried putting the cowling on sideways and then trying to pull it on and then rotate it well that crap didn't work so you're gonna say well what the hell did you do and I'm gonna say well I did something that at least this plane has replacement parts it's still in production they're in stock so if I had to buy a new cowling I could um, hopefully that's not really the case but what I ended up doing was and maybe you saw when I already rotated this was I figured what I would do here is I cut a slit all the way from here to here and that was just enough to enable me to put this thing on sideways and just kind of rotate it and then spread it apart and get that thing on there now I figured that's really not that big of a deal because chances are I'm probably going to relieve considerably more of this anyway for cooling because I've got my flex exhaust on here and my flex exhaust you'll see as when I take the cowling off comes to about right there and I really kind of want that more exposed outside anyway but then what I figured I would do is they sell red electrical tape uh, what I figured I would do then is maybe once I get it installed make sure my cowling is really clean and I can just put a piece of red electrical tape you know here and who's going to know the better when this plane is on the ground uh, idling or doing this type of thing anyway. Now granted that electrical tape probably won't stay and maybe it won't be necessary, I don't know. Um, but that's what I ended up having to do. There was really no other way to do this. I didn't want to go cutting and making a two-piece cow because that's just a real pain in the ass. Right now I've got it kind of taped in place. So um, to save you guys uh, hearing me cussing, I'm going to stop the cameras right now and take the cowling off and show you the engine installation. Okay, whew, I'm telling you, that is a real mother 
to get on and off and it is not fun because you got to try and <laughs> for me I got to try and remember what the hell way did I turn it to try to get off and I think I was always getting it so that this cylinder that sticks out furthest was the one that would come through the hole first and it's just a pain in the ass and believe me uh, working with that fiberglass cowl that cowling is beautiful it's not so beautiful anymore because just the two times that I've had it on here it starts wanting to chip out and stuff this sucks this is not an enjoyable thing to do at all <clears throat> and once I finally get it done in fact that's probably the last time that cowling's ever going on this plane until the last minute I'll have to try and seal those edges against it chipping out like it does every time I put it on and off so that part sucks but anyway so here's my engine installation um, let me zoom this one camera in here real quick so you can see I didn't really have to do any kind of modifications whatsoever to get this installed on here it's a very easy installation the bottom of the mount came almost right to the bottom and, and hopefully I turned it enough to the face forward so you can see this was actually pretty well centered in that hole for the for the spinner too so I think that's really good there now I've got some pictures that I'll put up here that show where I had to relieve areas here for uh, the fuel inlet because it's right here and then the throttle which is right here also but I think what will happen and it should work out pretty well is if I put a fuel tank and slide it way over here to the side I can run my throttle servo right here and it'll engage with my throttle arm perfectly without binding or any strange little bends or kinks or anything now the other thing is I'm probably gonna have to make sure my tank is as far back as possible so I'll have a little bit longer fuel line if I had it all the way up to the fuel to the firewall the fuel, the fuel line would be so short it'd only be about this long really because that's how close the nipple or the fuel inlet is there so if I even have the fuel tank all the way back here that's still only like a two and a half three inch line from the tank to the inlet which will be fine because the more weight I can shift back on the fuselage the better and if that means my fuel tank comes to right here fine so be it my throttle servo will be back here and I've already decided more than likely I'm going to be installing my uh, tail surface uh, servos in the aft of the fuselage so anyway uh, there's really not a really good way for me to show you the triangle stock reinforcement in here but I think you get the idea the next thing I'm going to do now is remove this engine and probably coat this entire area with epoxy just because I don't necessarily trust the paint here to be fuel proof I have no idea what kind of paint that is and I don't really trust it to be fuel proof and this thing does become kind of an oily mess as it runs uh, you can see my flex exhaust here um, I had to kind of bend it shape it so it would come out at the right angle so anyway that's the update on the spacewalker I'm going pretty slow on it because I've got all the other projects going on as you can see on the, the table uh, but uh, anyway that's the status of this uh, assembly right now so thank you for watching <laughs>